Oh, um, hey, please don't click off the video. I spent a lot of time making this, but let's just start. I don't even know if I thanked you all for the 5,000 subscribers. Now we already have 6,000. Yeah, thanks a lot. Now let's start with the actual video. But first we need to discuss some new words. So, first rule. Don't resell it. Second rule. Don't try to claim it as yours. And third rule. If you use it, credits would be nice, but are not required. These are all the rules. Okay, now let me tell you what I actually added to the model. Uh, so as you may know, I added mobile support in the last episode of the tutorial series, but I obviously didn't add anything new. <coughs> um, yeah, so first of all, I added a simple and probably really bad enemy AI. I can uh, show you how it fights later. Um, yeah. If you're better with enemy AI, please modify it, make it better. It's really bad. <laughs> okay. Then now let me uh, show you how it actually uh, reacts. So. Uh, yeah, it can't see you from behind, but if you go in front of him, he will draw his sword and attack you if you come near him. And yeah, just do some normal strikes with bluffs sometimes. Yeah, nothing, nothing special in the set. He's also not really smart, so yeah. This is basically the enemy AI. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, what else did I add? So, I added the ability for you to easily create new weapons and modify them. So, one really important thing is in Soul Storage modules, we have a weapon info module. This is where you can modify the sets of the weapons and uh, blocking general stuff. <clears throat> you just can play around with those numbers. I always told here what, uh, exactly what they do. So yeah. But what if you want to make a new weapon now? So as you maybe saw already, uh, I have four different weapons for you already made. A katana, a nagiata, a dagger, and fist. But what if you want to add something new? Well, we simply just go to replicate storage into our animations folder, into our weapons folder, then copy or duplicate one of the already existing folders and let's call it just tool. Here you can just modify all the animations, but uh, we aren't already done, obviously. So then also go into Starter Pack, then clone one of the already existing tools, rename it with the same name as the animation folder, so both cool. And then also go into Sound Service, SFX, then Weapons, and Duplicate also one of those folders and call it also true. That's how you make a new weapon. If you want to make like tool from scratch, you would have to well, obviously create a tool. Then we name it like, I don't know, sword. But that isn't enough if you then have your sword folder or a uh, or a empty sort folder here. You also need to add a new attribute to it, a new string attribute. So just click on the sort, scroll down in the properties and you see attributes, 
and it's supposed to be a string attribute and the string attribute is um, called type and here you just set the string to attack. I've just made it like this uh, because I maybe for later you want to have like attack tools and maybe heal tools. So yeah, our because our combat script uh, only works for those attack tools. This is simply why I made that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, and if you are if you again making something from scratch, your uh, tool. Let's just take the dagger. Always needs this uh, body attach. We don't have a handle because we want to animate our weapons with a motor 6D weld. So we can animate the weapons too, not just our character. So uh, your weapons need a body attach. And in the set of the body attach, uh, you don't have to do it, but there also can be a trail. And yeah, just then weld uh, those parts together too. And in those scripts, uh, this is just for the backpack. Uh, but here we just weld our tool with a motor 60 to our player's right arm. You can also just look at this dummy and see. Look at this right arm. Here's the tool grip, and it's welded together with the body attach. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's how you change every animation, sound, whatever. But for the animation, it's, uh, it's also important that your equip animation uh, has this little animation event called equipped. Why is that? You may ask. Um, it's just for uh, making the transition between the equip animation and the idle animation smoother. Because normally, if I would have used just <coughs> ended the ended function of animations, there would always be that little buffer time between the um, yeah between the idle animation between the equip animation. I can actually just show it to you. So we would normally do all of that. Uh, so brought it down here. But if you let's say do uh, equip dots equip animation that ended connect function, and then do this. Let's just take this out. You are gonna notice uh, a little yeah buffer time. This you see this. That's always uh, <coughs> going like back a bit. Yeah. Exactly, that's uh, what the problem is. It, does, it doesn't look good. So we, yeah, start already playing our idle animation a bit earlier. That's a way to prevent that. Okay. Then it's also important for your... <coughs> uh, for your animations oh. we will have also an animation event and that animation event is uh, gonna be called hit this is just simply for spawning in the hitboxes so at this point we want to spawn in our hitbox if you don't know uh, if you don't have moon animator but don't know how to do animation events with the normal animation editor <coughs> you can just uh, go on your dummy and oh, then that's gonna make <clears throat> but oh, that's that's the right animation uh, to your swing animation then go to the point where you want to create your animation event uh, yeah okay <laughs> but then just right click that area and add animation event here add event and event name is it that's how you would do that for the animation editor. Okay. 
Um, yeah. Okay. Now, what I added, uh, what I also added is heavy attacks. But what are heavy attacks? They are pretty simple actually. They are normal attacks, but uh, stronger. Heavy attacks go through block and through parrying. So, we have a blocking and a parrying dummy here. Let's just try to hit him. Hmm, yeah, he blocks the attack obviously. But now if we press R, we'll do our heavy attack. And heavy attacks, as I said, go through blocking and through parrying. So I can also show it um, at the parrying dummy. With a normal attack, we get parried. But if you do our heavy attack by pressing R, it goes through the parry. Yeah, that's basically what the heavy attack is. We can also make it different for every of the weapons, just change the animations. Let's just say, at a dagger, I made it so that it's like a two hit um, heavy attack. Bam, bam. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you can also easily see when it's a heavy attack because this kanji symbol, uh, this Japanese symbol, uh, pops up above your head and this pretty loud sound starts playing. But, well, even though the, um, the heavy attack is obviously slower, how do I avoid it, you may ask? Well, that's where I also added another new feature, and that's uh, dodging, or like rolling. And that's rolling in all four directions. Like that. That's how you uh, can avoid your enemy's heavy attacks. If you act fast enough. Yeah. But uh, you may ask how can I configure the, um, the heavy attacks cooldown or the blocking cooldown. That's pretty simple. For the heavy cooldown just go into your public plan script and startup plan script. And you already see here our heavy cooldown. You could also configure the time to faint. Uh, the painting stuff is still pretty bad. <laughs> uh, you may just remove it if you don't like it, but yeah, that's basically how uh, fainting looks. Just like pretending you're gonna attack, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. It's the de uh, dodging thing is. Pretty much the last thing I added. Alright, oh, I forgot to show you where you can forget the dash cooldown. It's yeah, just in a dash client. Uh, in the service script down here. Oh no, wait, I'm dumb. Uh, <laughs> here in the local scopes and scroll down here you can see the cooldown. I'm just gonna actually move it up actually. So, yeah. I also try to, yeah, um, make more scripts easy to look through, uh, like putting more stuff up here that's important and then the actual stuff down here. There's also more support, yeah, uh, full mobile support, oh actually not full, uh, I haven't made the dash mobile support yet, but I hope it's in the final model, uh, when I release the final model. If not, I'm sorry, but then I'm gonna add it later. Uh, yeah, one weird thing for mobile, I don't even know if you can change that somehow, but only three tools always show up because the mobile inventory is kinda small. I don't know if you can actually change that, but yeah. You can just press those buttons to do whatever you want. <coughs> that was, I think, already everything. Uh, yeah. I just fixed also a lot of bugs, like you may know that if you follow the tutorial, that there was this one really annoying bug that the animation stopped playing for other clients. That's already also fixed, uh, fixed. 
äh, Bad hier. <lacht> I also try to leave as many comments as I could in the code itself, in my personal code. Äh, ja. Äh, ja, so. Let's see, everything works normally for both fans. Every animation plays normally. Yep. Äh, and. Ähm, ja. Yeah. That should be everything. Oh, no, one more thing. Uh, I changed the hitbox module to the Pachacho hitbox. Um, however you pronounce that. So in server search, uh, you can go to the Pachacho hitbox module. And scroll down here to change the hitbox transparency. Yeah. That's everything. Uh, thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, you can leave a like on the video or subscribe to my channel. It would help me a lot. Uh, I am soon monetized actually on YouTube and yeah. That would mean a lot to me if I'm finally mon uh, monetized and can make some money off YouTube. Yeah. Thanks for watching.